Hello and welcome from myself, Jamie Adjacent, and I'm here today with the Osmos by Expressive E. Well, it's a 49 key multi-gesture polyphonic synthesizer, which is a bit of a mouthful. However, I'm sure many of you know about it by now. There's been quite a few videos and demos that have gone out there and some are played by some extremely virtuoso people and I'm not one of them. So I wanted to get into the nitty gritty and start making some sounds. However, you can't actually make sounds directly on the instrument itself. If you want to get right into the detail and make sounds from scratch, well, it's a very sort of modular approach, really, but it's done via software. There is an editor and it's part of MSP with Ableton, Max, that kind of thing. I don't really use that, so I tried to get it working and I couldn't. So I've not gone into the detail of making a sound from scratch, but I have took a number of patches and I've tweaked them uh, to my own sort of taste. So what about the build quality? Well, I mean, it is beautifully made. It's very, very firm and heavy. These keys do stand up above it, 
I think it'd be a great idea if, you know, those manufacturers who make those plastic covers, the dust covers, if they made one for that, as well as coming over the controls, uh, it fit quite perfectly, actually. So, yeah, something like that, because I'm a bit concerned about the keys. Also, when you do play it, you, because you've got the left and right movement for pitch, you can actually end up finding that you're overlapping with the key next to it, and they clash and they clank and all that kind of stuff so um i'm not too sure whether that's going to end up causing like chipping over time i hope not but they are solid solid keys and uh yeah it's a beautifully made instrument really so i'm very impressed with it so far so unlike other controllers maybe like the roly there are a few more gestures that you can actually do with this instrument and the best thing really is to just demonstrate it. And the sound that I used in that track is one of them. And you can hear when you go in very, very lightly and just touch it, there's like a, a, a single tone. That's extremely light. And then the next sound, when you push a little bit harder, it's like an octave higher. And then the harder you push, the more together they are. And then you push down, you get that kind of bowed effect. So I found the best way to play this is to be very light with your touch. And it's really shown up some of my bad technique, especially with my left hand. I mean, I'm not a great player anyway. I can sort of do some shapes with my right hand, but my left hand, I'm usually just playing octaves or the root notes. And when you're playing a normal synth, whatever, you just slap them down and there it is. But with this, I found, especially with my little finger, and I'm pulling the note. <laughs> So it's very easy to make it sound absolutely horrible. I think a lot of these types of controllers work best when you're using monophonic lines or if you just completely narrow down those parameters so it's not as sensitive. Now here's a great sound and it really shows off the gestures. So you've got a really slow attack and then it gets louder the more you push and then it has a release note which triggers a sample. Then you can push hard. You get your attack. And your left and right for creating your pitch changes. And then when you do it really quick, you get that kind of, I don't know, shaking type of effect. Uh, now there's a number of parameters on here, macros that you can change as well as effects. So the next tab along is synth. And we use this top knob here to go over to our different tabs along the top so we've got macros global effects eq compression and gain and voice and the one below will search through whichever parameters with it are in that menu let's see how much we can mess this up so release
and the effects. Let's add a touch of reverb for this. So I'm going to move on to like a string sound and this is where you really have to watch out for your plane. It's so easy, you know, for your finger, the more that you're pushing down for it not to be completely going down vertically, uh, just slightly moving to the left or the right and then you'll notice some pitch changes. nice sound but so easy to go out and that's really down to the technique you have to just i found that i had to play for probably about half an hour before i really was able to control where my fingers were going and then uh, record that piece however you can change some of the settings for uh, the sensitivity and you can see here we've got bending we can have it as various different amounts Or just completely turn it off. Then we've got a different tab for our pressure. Now, if you want to go through specific sounds, well, you've got categories here. You can then just go through various different ones. Airy, atonal, chords, dry, electric. So I've briefly talked about the internal synth engine, you know, what you can do. There's a certain level of control that you can change, but it's not, you know, a fully fledged synthesizer going in this way. You have to use the software. Then I thought, ah, I've actually still got Equator. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to put it into external mode. It's just as it was. It comes in with two MIDI ports when you link it up to your DAW. You set it as the second MIDI port.
even though the internal engine is great and I used a couple of the sounds on there and hopefully over time that will get expanded and, you know, just a, an easier way to access it. But I think the marriage of this hardware, this controller with Equator is like ah, a perfect match. <laughs> Yeah, it's just a quick overview of the instrument, and I think it's brilliant. I'm definitely going to buy one. I just could not have done that track any other way. I mean, you can do bits with pitch bend and a bit of aftertouch, but some of it, you know, I was playing, and some of it was intentional, and some of it was like, oh, <laughs> I didn't mean to do that, but it sounds good. So make sure you go and check one out, especially over at Music Matter in Preston. So thanks very much for joining me and just talking about the Osmos. I've not gone into lots of detail about the, there's so much I could do really in terms of the MIDI side, but I need to spend a good few weeks with it. So I'll wait until I get one and then maybe I'll pop up with some videos. So uh, thanks very much and I'll see you next time.